On this episode of Motivate's Do It Yourself Garage, we are going to show you how to check for fuel pressure on any Nissan and Infiniti made after 2003 using CJ Motorsports Handsome Fuel Tap. Around 2003, Nissan and Infiniti changed to a returnless fuel system. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means we can no longer use our standard T-tap to measure our fuel pressure. We now need to do something else because the new system has a hard plastic line like this, so we can't easily T-tap into it. So how do we check for fuel pressure? Well, we need something like a fuel tap. This one is from CG Motorsports, and it goes between our fuel dampener and our fuel rail, and it provides us with a 1 8 empty port to attach our fuel pressure gauge. And here's a package we got from CJ Motorsports. Now, in the very top, we've got some nice synthetic grease, which is for the O-rings. This prevents the O-ring from getting nicked and causing a fuel leak, which of course is bad. Down below here, we've got some nice stainless steel hardware, as well as a 1 8 MPT plug, just in case you don't always want to run a pressure gauge because of the engine heat. If you're like me, I bought a $10 gauge. I wouldn't trust it under the hood for very long. I just may use that plug right there. And below here is our actual fuel tap. Now, earlier I called it a handsome fuel tap. Let me show you why I call it handsome. Now, when you look at this, it's just beautiful. There's no machining marks. It just looks really, really well made. Let's get this on the car and have a look. So here's the fuel tap we're going to install. Now, before we do that, it's really important to read the instructions that are provided at CJ Motorsports website. You want to know what to expect and exactly what you're doing. After all, we're playing with a fuel system and we don't want any fires. I have disconnected the battery because in some cases it's possible for the fuel system to be pressurized even with the ignition off. And I have removed the engine cover so you have good access to here. And again, Here's our CJ Motorsports fuel tap, and this goes between our fuel dampener and our fuel injector rail. Now, the first thing we need to do is to remove this harness. Now, the best way I've found, take some neat on those pliers, get it right about there, squish, and then lift up. And that gets the harness off like that. The next step we need to do, remove this bolt. It's 10 millimeters. It's not very tight. We can remove that and that's good. Now, if we take this metal bracket here and we can get it up and over and get this around like that, we can actually spin it up to get to this other clip right here. So what we'll do is we will also squish that and it can take a bit of fiddling or a lot of fiddling, <laughs> there we go. And we can get this bracket off and get the bracket out of our way. Now, we've got a 10 millimeter bolt here and here. Before we loosen it, what we're going to do, we're going to put something underneath to catch any fuel that's going to drip. We will now give this a quarter turn like that. And over here, here we are. Then, to prevent any fuel from getting sprayed, we're gonna make sure we have safety glasses on, which I do. We're going to cover this, push down so it can't pop off, and there's the first screw. And we're gonna slide over here to the second one. All right, it's now loose. And I'm gonna put this back down here. And then we're going to lift it up by wiggling side to side a little bit. And I don't know if you can see it right there. We got some fuel that is sprayed. So now this has been disconnected. Here is our fuel tap and it goes right there. Now, before we connect it, what we need to do is to take some of this grease and put it on the O-ring. This prevents the O-ring 
from possibly getting torn. Make sure this is totally clear. We don't want to sort of capture a rag between our fuel tap and our fuel injector rail. So we'll now put this like this and push down. That's good. Now we also have an O-ring here. So we're going to take some of this grease as well. And we're going to put it on that O-ring. And we are going to push this like that and push it down as well. Now the kit comes with some nice stainless steel hardware. We will put one here and one here. We're going to take a five millimeter Allen and we're just going to get everything aligned. There we are. We've got the first one started. Then we'll get the second one started. There we go. And we're just going to snug this. Okay, so that is snug and this is snug. Now the actual torque spec is 74 inch pounds or just under six foot pounds. So it's not a lot. I'm just gonna snug it up by hand for right now. There we are. And there we are. Okay. So now our fuel tap is installed, but we need a gauge. And here's the gauge I picked up. Now, this gauge goes to 100 PSI, which would be more than enough. The fuel pressure should be around 50, 52 PSI. So 100 PSI gauge is more than plenty. Now, I don't expect great things from this gauge. Um, it's a $9 gauge, it got it Canadian Tire, but it'll give us a good idea of what the pressure is. I've already got about two turns of Teflon tape, so now I can just simply screw this in. Do that like so. All right. So, all that should be good. A quick double check of the snugness. Oh, yep, yeah, six foot pounds, I can tell. And, oh, 5.8, 5.9, there's six. Okay, yeah, I'm kidding. I really have no idea, but it's, it's, it's good. Okay, so there's our fuel pressure gauge. Now, the next step is to go inside the car and we're not actually going to start the engine. What we're going to do, we're not gonna to touch the clutch pedal or the brake pedal don't touch any pedals and simply push the ignition once to go to accessory and then once to on. That will run the fuel pump for about two seconds to pressurize the system. Now we're going to turn it off and we're going to do the same thing again. Okay, turn it off. Now we're going to go back and check for leaks. Okay, everything's looking good. We don't have any leaks. I'm now going to start the engine. Now that squeak that you heard, that's just the overrun clutch that's in the starter. It needs to be greased up a little bit. We'll show you how to do that in a future episode. But right now I want you to pay attention to the needle. Do you see how it's oscillating and shaking? Well, that's a one-time thing because we've had the fuel system open. By opening the fuel system, we have allowed a bit of air to get inside of it. So until that air works through the system, it sort of acts a bit like a spring. So we have these pressure pulses and that's why the needle is shaking. As the air works through the fuel system, the pulses go away. Okay, so it looks like we've got about 54 PSI. Let me just rev the engine a little bit. So we can see a momentary drop of fuel pressure, which is completely to be expected. Yeah, so this gauge is showing about 54 PSI, but again, it's a $9 gauge. The good news is the factory spec is 51 PSI or more, and we're showing about 54. So when you factor in any air from the gauge, we are good.
All right, so we have just turned off the engine and we can see our fuel pressure is about 48, 49 PSI. Now we're gonna come back in 30 minutes and have a look at our fuel pressure. According to Nissan, the fuel pressure should not drop below 30 PSI in 30 minutes. If it does, that means we have a problem with our fuel pressure regulator in our gas tank, or maybe a leaky injector or some other issue with the fuel system. We'll come back in 30 minutes and have a look. In this case here, my fuel pressure was about 48, 49 PSI, depending upon the accuracy of my $9 gauge. And now it's dropped down to 46 PSI after 30 minutes. So that tells us our fuel pressure regulator in the tank is good, as well as we don't have any fuel injectors that are leaking. If we did, the fuel pressure would be dropping much faster. So with all that being said, it looks like our fuel system has good integrity. Okay, now there's two other things I want to mention. Now, this gauge is a $9 gauge I got at Canadian Tire. It looks like it works well, but I don't know if it can handle the underhood temperatures of a hot engine. So, CJ Motorsports also provides this very nice 1 8 amputee plug. We can easily unscrew the gauge and put the plug in, making it easy down the road to remove the plug, put the gauge in to check our fuel pressure. So that is good there. Or of course, you can simply remove the fuel tap. As you've seen, it's not very difficult. Now, with regards to this bracket that we have removed, you can simply keep the bracket off. It's not going to hurt anything. Or if you really want to have the bracket on, just simply trim around here so that there's room for a gauge, assuming you trust a gauge that will handle the underhood temperatures. All right then, let's wrap up this episode. First of all, I want to thank CJ Motorsports for providing us with their fuel tap, which allowed us to check our fuel pressure at idle and check our fuel pressure after 30 minutes of engine off time. Please visit cj-motorsports.com to learn more. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.